This is a summary of an interesting article that I found on the website of uh, one of Germany's largest newspapers, Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung. And this is a summary of its Google translated version in English. The article asks whether uh, Hitler actually got his racist ideas from, guess where, the United States. Written by Markus Günther, updated on October the 11th, 2018, and as always, no copyright infringement intended. This video's purpose is actually to educate those who might view it. More than 100 years ago, the idea of breeding a superior white race became popular in the United States. It was known as eugenics. In other words, they wanted to improve the genetic genetical quality or pool of, uh, in this case, white people. And this was by no means unknown elsewhere in the West. Uh, some European countries also at least uh, had academic discussions on this question. And uh, actually, there was, at least in some European countries, a sterilization program of certain people who were considered unfit to procreate or unworthy to procreate. The determination with which the Americans went to work also inspired the Nazis. <clears throat> After the 36-year-old, meaning Hitler in 1925, had read the book, his enthusiasm knew no bounds. He constantly quoted important passages and wrote an enthusiastic letter to the American author confessing that the reading was a revelation to him and the book uh, much more or was much more than a text it's my bible interestingly enough uh he had during his nine month imprisonment related to his beer hall putsch an unsuccessful attempt to start a revolution a far-right revolution in germany in one of uh, münchen's or munich's uh, beer cellars uh, he had dictated his uh, main work, Mein Kampf or My Struggle, around the same time. <clears throat> but maybe he had already been released. Madison Grant, the author, at the time he had certainly heard his fan's name before, but in 1925 he could not have imagined what role the enthusiastic reader would play in Germany and the world soon, starting in 1933, and already on a smaller scale since 1930 when the Nazis or National Socialists achieved their first major electoral victory at the federal level in Germany. He sent the admirer a copy with personal dedication as thanks for the fan mail, which today stands in the Library of Congress in Washington, <clears throat> and suggests the fateful connection between American uh, hereditary and German racial policy. The Fall of the Great Race is the name of the book by Madison Grant, and his enthusiastic reader, as I already have revealed, was Adolf Hitler. Let's look if there would be... any information <clears throat> outside this uh, website on Madison Grant. Okay, the passing of the great race, okay. Or the racial basis of European history. <clears throat> he published it in 1916. Madison Grant was an American eugenicist, in other words, a person who studied ways to improve the genetic quality of uh, people, in this case, white people in the United States, lawyer and amateur anthropologist. <coughs> Madison Grant was born in November 1865, in other words, he was over 23 years older than his fan, Adolf Hitler, who was born in April 1889, 
<clears throat> and died in May 1937, uh, just under eight years before his fan shot himself dead in April 1945. In other words, he lived for 71 years, while Hitler only lived for 56 years. <clears throat> As a eugenicist, Grant was responsible for one of the most famous works of scientific racism and played an active role in crafting strong immigration restriction that kicked in already in the 1920s, by the way, and anti-miscegenation laws in the United States. In other words, people of different racial groups could not have <coughs> sexual intercourse together. As a conservationist, Grant is credited with uh, the saving of many different species of animals, founding many different environmental and philanthropic philanthropic uh, organizations and developing much of the discipline of wildlife management. <clears throat> he was born in New York City and he died there as well of nephritis or kidney disease. His alma maters were Columbia University and Yale University. His father, Gabriel Grant, was a well-known physician and American Civil War surgeon, and his mother was Carolyn Manis. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Grant was the oldest brother among four siblings. Um, Grant advocated the so-called Nordic theory. The most important of Grant's concerns with the changing stock of American immigration of the early 20th century, characterized by increased numbers of immigrants from Southern and Eastern Europe, so for example, Italians, <coughs> Greeks, uh, Poles, Ukrainians, and Russians, as opposed to Western and Northern Europe. Passing of the Great Race was a racial interpretation of contemporary anthropology and history, stating race as the basic motor of civilization. Similar ideas were proposed by Mr. Gustav Kosina in Germany. Grant promoted the idea of the Nordic race, a loosely defined biological cultural grouping rooted in Scandinavia. So uh, countries, uh, the countries uh, usually included in Scandinavia are Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. Sometimes Iceland is included, and especially uh, people who live outside Northern Europe include also Finland, although most of Finland's 5.5 million people are not directly of Scandinavian origin. <clears throat> as the key social group responsible for human development. Thus, the subtitle of the book was The Racial Basis of European History. <clears throat> as an avid eugenicist, Grant further advocated the separation, quarantine, and eventual collapse of undesirable traits and worthless race types from the human gene pool and the promotion, spread, and eventual restoration <clears throat> of desirable traits and worthwhile race types conducive to Nordic society. <coughs> Sorry. In the book, Grant recommends segregating unfavorable races in ghettos by installing civil organizations through the public health system to establish quasi-dictatorships in their particular fields. Nordic theory in Grant's formulation was similar to many 19th century racial philosophies which divided the human species into primarily three distinct races, Caucasoids based in Europe, Negroids based in Africa, and Mongoloids based in Asia. Nordic theory, however, further subdivided Caucasoids into three groups, Nordics, who inhabited Northern Europe and other parts of the continent, Alpines, whose territory included Central Europe and parts of Asia, and Mediterraneans who inhabited Southern Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East, <coughs> or Western Asia. Although North Africa 
has at least partly been included in the Middle East, especially uh, Egypt and Libya. In Grant's view, Nordics probably evolved in a climate that must have been such as to impose a rigid elimination of defectives through um, the agency of hard winters and the necessity of industry and foresight in providing the year's food, clothing and shelter during the short summer. The Nordic in his theory was Homo Europeus, the white man par excellence. <clears throat> Uh, Grant, while aware of the Nordic migration theory into the Mediterranean, appears to reject this theory as an explanation for the high civilization features of the Greco-Roman world. <coughs> Sorry. According to Grant, Nordics were in a dire state in the modern world, where, because of their abandonment of cultural values rooted in religious or superstitious proto-racialism, they were close to committing race suicide by miscegenation and by being outbred by inferior stock taking advantage of the situation. The book was immensely popular, went through multiple printings in the United States and was translated in, into a number of other languages, notably German, in 1925. And no wonder, as a racist uh, politician, <clears throat> Hitler then read the book's translated German version. I'm not sure if Hitler spoke functionally any English. Uh, he should have understood some because, after all, German and English are closely enough related to be, uh, at least to some extent, or slightly mutually intelligible. Although, of course, since German has these prefixes and suffixes uh, and quite many words which don't seem to bear any direct resemblance to their English equivalents. Uh, Germans who have never studied English can only partly understand it and uh, vice versa. English Native English speakers who have never studied German can only partly understand it. <clears throat> By 1937 the book had sold 16,000 copies in the United States alone. Nordic theory was strongly embraced by the racial hygiene movement in Germany in the early 1920s and 1930s, which, however, they typically used uh, the term Aryan, um, or in which, however, they typically used the term Aryan instead of Nordic. But the principal Nazi ideologist, Alfred Rosenberg, born in Estonia and therefore a Baltic German, preferred Aerial spelled A-R-Y-O Nordic or Nordic Atlantean. Stephen Jay Gould described the passing of the great race <clears throat> as the most in influential tract of American scientific racism. Adolf Hitler was so fascinated by book that he wrote to Grant, the book is my Bible. Grant represented the hereditarian <clears throat> branch of physical anthropology at the time despite his relatively amateur status, and was staunchly opposed to and by uh, Mr. Franz Boas, who was a German Jew by birth, but had immigrated to the United States. <clears throat> and Grant uh, disliked Boas so much, or Boas so much, that he for several years tried to get Boas fired from his position at Columbia University. And Boas and Grant were involved in a bitter struggle for control over the discipline of anthropology in the United States, <clears throat> while they both served, along with others, on the National Research Council Committee on Anthropology after the First World War. <clears throat> <clears throat> Boas and his uh, students who advocated cultural anthropology and cultural relativism, in other words, trying to stop dividing cultures into superior and inferior ones and rather trying to understand each culture on its own terms. <coughs> Boas and his students eventually wrested control <coughs> sorry, of the American Anthropological Association from Grant and his supporters and used as a flagship organization for his brand, brand of anthropology. In response, Grant founded the Galton Society with American eugenicist and biologist 
Charles B. Davenport in 1918 as an alternative to Boas. Uh, Mr. Grant served as the vice president of the Immigration Restriction League from 1922 to his death. He also provided statistics for the Immigration Act of 1924 to set quotas on immigrants from certain European countries. Even after passing the statute, Grant continued to be irked or annoyed that even a smattering of non-Nordics were allowed to immigrate to the country each year. He also <clears throat> assisted in the passing and prosecution of several anti-miscegenation laws, notably the Racial Integrity Act of 1924 in the state of Virginia, where he sought to codify his particular version of the one-drop rule into law. However, Mr. Grant began to fall out of favor in the United States in the 1930s. Historians have attributed his, uh, or writers have attributed to uh, his uh, declining influence and the declining interest of the American public in his work, both to the effects of the Great Depression, which resulted in a general backlash against social Darwinism and related philosophies. Social Darwinism is the doctrine that it is useless to try to help the poor uh, individuals and businesses and other social and economic groups because just as according to Darwinism <clears throat> the fittest survive and there is that impersonal natural selection uh, of those who are to be uh, the fittest to survive uh, the fittest survive also in the societies and in the political and economic systems. However, uh, the Great Depression hit people from the bottom up. Many millionaires even uh, lost money that they had made, for example, in the stock market. <clears throat> and related philosophies, or, well, let's say several millionaires and many investors, and to the changing dynamics of racial issues in the United States during the interwar period. Rather than subdivide Europe into several racial groups, the biracial black versus a white theory of Grant's protege, Lothrop Stoddard, became more dominant in the aftermath of the great migration of African Americans from southern states <coughs> to northern and western ones. The rise of the Nazis in Germany also contributed to, to, contributed to Grant's intellectual uh, falling out of favor as the similarity of their overtly racist theories to Grant's would become a liability even before they were officially an enemy at war against the United States, which uh, then started in December 1941. <clears throat> Mr. Grant was, however, a close friend of several U.S. presidents, including Theodore Roosevelt and Herbert Hoover. But let's get back into this thought-provoking article. <clears throat> the book that American soldiers found in 1945 in Hitler's library on the first floor of the Berghof had not only put Hitler on the list of books that every national socialist should have read, he also quoted in Mein Kampf and in many speeches from Grant's book. Some come close to plagiarism, so uh, uh, in other words, he just stated uh, the arguments of Grant for the suppression of inferior genetic material and the white race's protection without uh, telling that these ideas actually came from Grant's book. In the conglomeration that appeared in the United States in 1916, this book clearly became a bestseller and re soon reached uh, a million copies sold. <clears throat> and it says, it took us 50 years to understand that English and proper dress, school attendance and church attendance are from a Negro. Uh, that, yeah, that even if a Negro, in other words, a person of African origin, uh, speaks English fluently and dresses properly, attends school uh, regularly and goes to church regularly, they do not make him into a white man. Yeah, too bad that uh, since I'm not a subscriber, I can't read this article, but uh, this is a thought-provoking one. Maybe, indeed, at least some of um, Hitler's racist theories and racialist theories came from 
Mr. Grant's book. And this, of course, would place the early 20th century American democracy or the pre-World War II American democracy in somewhat bad light. And these are actually arguments similar to the ones that <clears throat> these uh, far-right fringe groups use. That supposedly the white race is dying and therefore there must be a massive decrease of non-white immigration and even deportation according to the extremists of white um, and of non-white uh, immigrants and their children or then forced assimilation of some kind or segregation all in the name of protecting the traditional values and sadly even some people are fooled by uh, the Christian overtones of some of these people while uh, the Bible at least in the New Testament clearly shows that all people regardless of their ethnicity or so-called race are equally valuable in God's sight some food for thought for you, my dear viewers. <clears throat>